I'm Barbara Cueto. God has sent me to some pretty interesting places to tell people about Jesus and His amazing love. It all started when I wrote this book called From Mafia Princess to God's Princess. That's my story. I know firsthand how easy it is to live in the world and to bend to the pressures of its standards and values. But it seems like it's getting harder and harder for a genuine follower of Christ to live in the world, any place in the world, and be a real Christian. Hello, thank you for joining me for another edition of Real Christians. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 36, gives us some good news. It says, if the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Today we're going to meet some real Christians who have struggled with sin and bondage in their pasts and whom the Son set free and who now serve Him right on the front lines. In the war room we'll meet Ron Griffith. He is an author and an evangelist who's going to share with us some difficult things about his past and his addictions to pornography and how that slowly progressed into a a point where he was actually sneaking into people's homes and observing them. But he'll also share with us the miracle of how God delivered him and how he's now serving him all over the world. And then, over 50 years after the cross and the switchblade, David Wilkerson's ministry, Teen Challenge, is still thriving and still bringing thousands and thousands of men and women all over the world out of darkness into God's marvelous light. And today we'll have with us real servants of the Most High in our I Want to Be Like Jesus segment. But after all, shouldn't all real Christians want to be like Jesus? Don't go away. We have a great show planned. And like they used to say back in the day, don't touch that dial. The topic of today's War Room segment as I mentioned earlier, is a topic that I hold very dear to my heart because it has affected my home and my family, M most likely one church that I have attended at some point or another, statistically speaking. And it, when I wrote my book, From Mafia Princess to God's Princess, the Mafia Princess was involved in the world of pornography. My former husband was a uh, mafioso and was also his business was pornography and so I saw the wealth of money that could be made from this business and just the stronghold that I've seen even in people that I care about and so it's deeply affected my life and I know that it has affected the life of my guest Ron Griffith for many years it was a stronghold mm -hmm. in your life 13 years of marriage Wow. I, and be, you know, before that, of course. And you were in ministry? Uh, after my 13th year of marriage. <laughs> St I want to get an idea about, because I read your book, From Stage to Stage and Glory to Glory, mm -hmm. in which you speak very candidly about this topic of, of uh, pornography, of mm -hmm. sexual addiction. And what specifically was your area of addiction, and how did you get started? Well, when I was 12 years old, if I remember right, my father worked on the railroad, was a conductor on passenger train, and he brought home all of the leftover books and magazines from the, the train, people left that, on the train that they left, and he was supposed to clean up the Pullmans. And he stacked them in the well house, and uh, being one of 11 children, seven boys, mm. I always wondered if it was kind of his way of maybe educating us boys or oh, something. Oh really? Like he maybe. And yeah. uh, I got into that, uh, you know, girly magazines, that sort of thing. Back during that day, they didn't even show total nudity. Hmm. It was mostly just uh, creating imaginations of the mind, fantasy mm. and that sort of thing. Right. Some people are captured sure. by those images in just catalogs, Sears mm -hmm. and Robux catalogs. Right. So yeah. what you're saying, I Absolutely. completely identify with. Oh, uh, because back then, you know, just to look through a Sears and Robux catalog and, and look at the lingerie or right. whatever, right. and your imagination goes wild. And mm. as a 12-year-old, uh, I even read the book uh, God's Little Acre by Erskine Cowell. And that just got a hook in me, and it set a demonic force in my life 
that was so hard to escape from. And for years, I thought, you know, once I got married, that would all be taken care of. It's not that easy. It's not it? that easy. In fact, it was to the point to where even as a college professor teaching at a Christian university, I was making the rounds at night peeking in people's windows. Wow. I mean, it was just horrible. And I... So, I, so excuse me, you went from, and it's always like that with any yes. addiction. I know this very well. It, it always starts... But I always say that the passage down to the depths, mm -hmm. it, it's one step at a time. I see, exactly. imagine a stairway, and it's no different with pornography and the stronghold of sexual addiction. You started yeah. out maybe watching, seeing women that were scantily sure. clad, and a man's imagination, mind you, and I know this because I'm married, mm -hmm. and my husband sure. has told me, he's educated me, that a man's imagination works differently than a woman's. Absolutely. We may not be able to understand that, but a mm -hmm. man is very visual in his perceptions right. and his imagination. So you went from there to actually peeking and Yes. What, what we call and, keeping Tom. And back during that time, uh, probably there was nothing lower than a peeping Tom. Mm. That was just considered mm. to be such a taboo, you know, in society. And did, did and you so, want to see women? So, sure. Yeah. I, uh, it was a constant thing that just uh, yeah. that ate my lunch, if you of please. Of course. Any, and, any stronghold does. And uh, what a perception of defeat in my life. Even right. though I wanted to serve the Lord with all my whole heart ever right. since I was a kid, right, and would have become mm -hmm. a preacher, right, you know, right. Uh, uh, if it hadn't been for the fact that uh, I had this defeat mm -hmm. in my life, yeah. and you know, Satan uses three main areas um, as far as his primary weapons to defeat mm -hmm. us in our Christian walk, and one of them is deception. Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. to see deceive somebody means to make another person believe a lie or something that is not true. Mm. And when you... Um, and what, what would you say in pornography or what you were doing, what was the truth and what was the lie? That there's fulfillment in that some way, that uh, you know, you begin to get the point to where you want intimacy mm -hmm. so badly that you fantasize about it. We've talked about how the Bible says that Satan ro prowls around like a roaring exactly. lion, seeking someone to devour, and he does like any good lion. He seeks for weaknesses in mm -hmm. areas, mm -hmm. and he, he will do everything he can to lead us to the source uh, that will satisfy right. supposedly right. that weakness and in our lives. And that's one of the right? other areas, mm -hmm. uh, the lies that he, you know, deception, right. of course, is nothing more than a lie. That's right. And, uh, a stronghold is formed when deception takes hold in a person's life, mm -hmm. and that's what happened to me. The mm -hmm. stronghold was so strong that it wasn't until I finally was actually born again mm -hmm. and realized mm -hmm. that God had set me free from right. this. The prayer, yes, mm -hmm. is the strongest mm -hmm. spiritual offensive weapon we can use. Offensive meaning attacking and praise and prayer. Amen. But what else? would you recommend to our viewers well, that you, might be struggling in this area, uh -huh. who might have children or loved ones I really think, area. Barbara, that the most important thing is getting properly dressed before we get out of bed in the morning, mm -hmm. as See, we get out. You're speaking of the scripture. the full armor mm -hmm. of Christ. Practically speaking, mm -hmm. because I think some of our viewers may not be as knowledgeable about the, mm -hmm. the uh, full armor of mm -hmm. God, but check it out in Ephesians. It's an important exactly. one to know. Uh, that isn't with the internet, maybe you need to take the computer out of your home. With mm. with magazines, I never, I didn't, I, I don't subscribe to magazines. Do you think that's that, maybe what Jesus was talking about when he said, "If your eye offends you, to pluck it out"? Right. Get rid of it. Get rid of Walk the away. temptation and Turn the, the other problem way. that and causes that, that. And that is the probably the the main thing that we can do in the physical realm mm -hmm. is walk away. And it's hard. It's like any addiction. <laughs> it is hard. But I have learned in my life, as I'm sure you mm -hmm. have, that if you dedicate yourself to something for so many years, it takes just as much dedication That's to right. get out of it. That's because right. a lot of strongholds are not spiritual. Exactly. They're just habits. Mm -hmm. They're just bad habits. That's right. And you just have to walk away and turn, turn the other way, pluck out your eye. Yes. Thank you so much, Ron Griffith, for being here with me. And I hope you'll come back to discuss Thank this. Because this is an, an issue that we want to leave here. We will happily ask Ron, if you will, come back and, and we'll talk more in, in depth about these issues when we come back. Because there is freedom. That's, there, the, that's the good news. There is freedom. Absolutely freedom in Christ. We'll be back. 
From Mafia Princess to God's Princess is the story of how God miraculously turned Barbara Quetzal's tragic past, including marriage in the Mafia, into a testimony that has transformed and encouraged people the world over. For your tax-exempt gift of $20 or more, we'll send you a signed copy of this book. For your gift of $30 or more, we'll send a CD of Barbara's which includes Princess, a song that has spoken to women's hearts everywhere. Call the number on your screen now to partner with us and the crucial ministries we support or go to realchristianstv.org for more info. There's an old Jewish saying which goes, to save one life is like to save the whole world. Can you imagine then how many worlds have been saved through David Wilkerson, who wrote The Cross and the Switchblade, and all those who have followed in his footsteps since 1958 when this organization was founded? When I came to Teen Challenge, um, I had a life of addiction, depression. Um, to have a relationship with God, who has delivered me from so much. Sometimes we have a hard time forgiving ourselves. I had worked in the sex industry as a dancer in topless cl clubs, and I, it didn't stay like that, and it led to prostitution and drugs and alcohol, and you never fill that empty space. The, the empty space just gets bigger. And in Teen Challenge, I knew that Christ could only fill that empty space. And, and, and she can be a godly woman, a godly wife, where before uh, the world and whoever, rela whatever relationships she had before just made her feel like she was worthless. Here at Teen Challenge, around the country, volunteers and workers work to bring women out of addiction, to bring women closer to God, and men and women around the country. But here at this center, their specific goal is to bring women into discipleship, in, to bring women into a closer relationship with Jesus Christ. I helped him challenge because I am concerned about the young people learning to be free and uh, to have uh, to restore their lives. There's so much drugs and so many things that are happening to students today in, in high school, in junior high. Many of them need our help. So I'm just here to help in whatever way the Lord wants me to help. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Yeah. Teen Challenge is just a beautiful place to live and grow and, and with His help be everything that I know He wants me to be. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I started using when I was 14 and I've been sober for just over a year now. I had overdosed on heroin and methamphetamines and uh, the people that I was using with had uh, they had left me on the railroad tracks because they thought that I was dead. I woke up on the railroad tracks four days later. So that's when my best friend introduced me to Christ and the life that I could have without drugs. All we do in Teen Challenge is initiate the discipleship process. Help them to, to uh, fall in love with their Savior. Love heals. And um, so I'm falling in love with Jesus. It's been a very, very rewarding uh, process because I not only get to see the, the girls flourish, but then I get to see them go back to their homes and um, them minister to their, their children, their parents. But I press on to take hold that of that for which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Years ago, when I was desperately seeking freedom from my own addictions, God sent me to a little storefront teen challenge center. You see, there wasn't a live-in center at the time. Typically, a, a woman will be there for nearly a year. And I heard some of the best news of my life, which propelled me onto the road of sobriety and then later into service for our God and King. So I'm so grateful to have with me today Pastor Albert Ivada and Valerie Salcido of Teen Challenge, and they, they are the director and women's director of Teen Challenge El Paso. Uh, welcome to the show. I, I just want to get right down to it. Okay. Um, ladies first, Valerie, <laughs> um, I just wanted to ask you, um, and I think we talked about it earlier, was your background recovery, was your background uh, 
addictions or how did you come to Teen Challenge? Um, actually, no, I, I do not have um, any background with addictions myself personally. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in, in uh, I was raised, born and raised Christian, um, church all my life. And uh, um, I actually came to Teen Challenge my, because my mother, she started off as a volunteer when the Women's Center first opened. Um, and so I began volunteering there and um, the at Lord the, At the Teen Challenge at Center. At Teen Challenge Center. Which, I mean, I think it's interesting that your background was health promotion and fitness, right? Right. That's your degree. That's and that's degree. exactly what you're doing today, right? It is. So, so, so it is. It is indirectly related. So <laughs> God has led you to promote health and fitness of a different nature, perhaps. <laughs> sure. But but it's all the same thing. I, sure. That that is obviously. And I I've always thought that when I've prayed to God before, it used to be God give me this, God give me that. Now I just say God, you know me better than anybody else. <laughs> give exactly. me what give, give me what I'm going to be fulfilled and happy in exactly. doing what you want me to do. So that's what He did with you, whether Absolutely. you knew it or not at the time. Do you feel like? Did you feel like? Ah, you're right. This is where I need to be, or, or not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely did. You know, the Lord put a love in my heart for the students, um, and that was really what I was feeling was just that deep love and the desire mm -hmm. to, to help in any way that the Lord would have me help, mm -hmm. and that was what propelled me to do that. And and I truly felt that, that was my calling. Um, and you know, I think as many of us in ministry feel. You know, sometimes we do feel like I'm unworthy of this of this mm -hmm. honor of serving mm -hmm. you um, in this way. Um, oh, but yes. <laughs> luckily, thankfully, um, you know, the Lord, he, he's the one who who equips us. And so, yes, amen to that. Pastor Albert, welcome to you as well. I am so grateful and yet dumbfounded at how you've stuck with this for so many years. Wow. I know, as Valerie said, it's it's a privilege to serve God, but it's also so difficult to stay with it for so long. Well, you know, Barbara, it's, uh, I, first off, I want to thank you for having us here. Oh, I just thank the Lord that uh, I've been involved in ministry for about 30 years. Mm. I came to, my, uh, came to the Lord in the early 80s. I was just uh, got out of the Navy. I, I joined the Navy during the Vietnam era mm. and uh, came home addicted, you know, and it, that's my fault. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I just, I didn't know the Lord before. I came home messed up and and then I heard my brother Danny was, had gotten saved, and uh, hmm. my brother Danny had been a heroin addict. You weren't in the church at the time? No. I mean, you weren't raised in the church? I wasn't raised in the church. I mean, we just, it, it was a hard life. There was mm -hmm. a lot of violence in the home and, mm -hmm. and things like that. And, and so I, I, I really didn't believe in God. I just felt, you know, they're just people religious, weak, you know, they don't right. know how to handle life. Right. And that was, unfortunately, the worldly mindset that I had. But when nobody was around for me, Barbara, when uh, everything fell apart in my life, I just, you know, I, I remember my brother telling me, do you want a second chance at life, Albert? Mm -hmm. And here I was, 26 years old with nothing to my name, just messed up. Mm -hmm. And when I heard that message, do you want a second chance at life? And I, and I grabbed it. <laughs> and that second life, second chance at life started when I gave my life to Jesus Amen. Christ. Yeah. And I've been involved in ministry ever since. Uh, wow. I, I went through, uh, I went through the residential ahead. facility and, and uh, I knew... Uh, when I gave my sins over to the Lord, He cleansed mm -hmm. me, and, and I was born again into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. but, be, but what has begun, Barbara, is a lifelong discipleship process, mm -hmm. uh, life training. You know, mm -hmm. uh, we... We know about that. So, <laughs> yeah, and, and, you know, so now I've been serving the Lord for 30 years, uh, over 20 years with Teen Challenge, and then I was an associate pastor in Midland, Texas for five years. And, mm -hmm. and so uh, I, I see the importance of, of new life skills, especially for individuals who, who have been addicted. They're having to learn how to right. live again. Right. Uh, problem solve, coping mm -hmm. skills, decision making, money management, mm. relapse uh, prevention. All these things are so very important. So, so that's where you start. And that's the important thing to know about Teen Challenge, that you don't just bring someone out of their addictions. Because I know some people are even addicted to recovery, that they just haven't quite gotten out of addictive behavior. And you can get addicted to recovery. I, I've heard of circumstances where you're just going over and over the same things and not moving out of that. I think Christ very effectively moves us out of that. Tell me about the, the Teen Challenge Center and how it works in a nutshell. From day one, I'm addicted to heroin, as some of the ladies are. How, what do you do with me when I come to you? Before they come into Teen Challenge, they need to know that they know that they know it's about turning their lives over to Christ. Mm -hmm. And, and when they say they, this is what they want, then we say, 
come on down. Because there's a lot of times people want God's forgiveness, but they don't want their life to change. Right. And that ain't going to happen. All they're getting is, all, all they're becoming is religious sinners. Right. And, and so mm -hmm. the thing is that this is about a life transformed by the power of God mm -hmm. and that they live for God no matter what. We partner with Teen Challenge. We will continue to partner with Teen Challenge because men and women all over the globe are being saved through Teen Challenge and not just being saved from addictions, being saved for the kingdom of God to go out there and fight their own battles, to fight the good fight and to get on on the front lines like you are. And I thank you so much for being here with me today. And do come back and fill us in on what's going on. Thank We'd love you, to, Robert. Thank you. And you all stick around too. There's more to come. Whether you're a slave to destructive behavior or know someone who is, or if you simply desire to go closer to God, 120 Days to Freedom will help you reach your desired level of commitment. For your tax-exempt gift to this ministry of $20 or more, we'll send you a signed copy of Barbara's book. Call the number on your screen now to partner with us and the crucial ministries we support or go to realchristianstv.org for more info. A couple of years ago, I was going through sort of a ministry burnout period, and a friend of mine gave me, gifted to me a copy of a, a video called The Bema, which is based on the Bema Judgment Seat of Christ. And the actor and producer of it is an is a man named Michael Sewell, who I'm so happy to have on the show here today, and I don't want to take any more time with introductions because I want him to tell you about him. So, Michael, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Barbara. I'm, nice I'm, to be here. I'm thrilled to have you here. That, that movie revolutionized my life. We got yes. to the point which, at, in the movie, where you, the, the man in the movie appears before Christ and all of his works that he did for the Lord were summed up. Tell us about the movie, and then we're going to get into your life a little more. I love that message, and I've been able to do it for the past 10 years all over the world. The, it's the story of a man. He's a hard-driven businessman. He's a Christian, but he's, he's kind of fallen into the idea that the, the ethic of business is just to make money. He thinks that his life is about the accumulation of that and being successful. He's raptured, and then he gets to see his life from a completely different point of view. He sees that he's been living for all the wrong reasons. And what's, what's, what I love about it the most is it presses on our blessed hope as Christians, mm -hmm. because even though he basically blew it and ended up with almost no treasure, still, Jesus was looking for every reason to reward him. Mm. He, was, oh, he was drawing him by loving kindness, because the Bema is based on... The, the old idea of the judgment seat. Mm -hmm. And it's mentioned in, in the New Testament, 2 yeah. Corinthians 5.10, uh -huh. that word judge, judgment is bima. Right. And it's it's like when you stand, when the winner stood at the Olympics this summer, mm -hmm. when they received their prizes, right. that's what it's like. It's right. this place where God wants to pour out. And I want to remind people and stir that up in them, that mm -hmm. we are living to that's please right. Jesus. And, and he's not angry with us. He's looking for every reason right. to bless us and to reward us. He right. And that's exactly what happened in the movie, in, in the dramatization that is based on a book by the same name. That's exactly what happened. He realized, wow, my lo everything that I thought was real was not real. That, that wasn't reality in heaven. And so that actually caused me to readjust my way of thinking. And every time I stumble into that train of thought again, I always refer back to this movie. When I read your website, which is up on the screen for anybody who wants to contact Michael about a DVD or ministry, that you were a, you're a theater actor, very hard. You were, uh, you, you were trained, obviously, in voice and dramatization, and you are also a soap opera actor for a while. And I know right. the, these were not uh, the things be, you know, like the Bema that you relied on, but they do train you. I had that training as well. But you didn't grow up in such a great environment did you no my my family was was pretty much messed up alcoholism uh occult activities mm -hmm. my dad was a numbers runner organized crime kinds wow. of things yeah. and yeah. when we became christians it was a profound change the lord just mm -hmm. came in changed everything uh -huh. and uh for years it was it was great but yeah. I had some bad experiences with church, and a lot of people do. You know, you right. can have those things that happen that break your heart, mm -hmm. and and I let it take my faith away. Yeah. I denied myself as a Christian, mm. and uh, I said I'm a seeker of truth. I became a real new ager. I moved to New mm. York. I studied at Lee Strasberg. Oh, my wow. voice teachers were the best. One one of my right. teachers 
is Tony Bennett's coach and Liza Minnelli. And yeah. I, I had great training, but I was getting more and more depressed, mm. further and further away from the Lord wow. into my own yeah. occult activities. And I was running from the Lord, but he wouldn't let me go. He, he <laughs> caught me on, a, on this desperate weekend. I was going to commit suicide. Aww. And he just came and said, you're mine. Oh, and then wow. who knew? I ended up doing the arts for the Lord. And isn't it wonderful when when he uses the things that he actually trained us for? We train those desires, and he uses them for his glory. It's it's an amazing, amazing thing. It's such a privilege and an honor. You, you get to the, the Lord uses you, and you see changes in people's lives. And your work isn't just about your ego, or or it just isn't no. good. You, you no. know. No, and, and if anything, I mean, when ego gets in the way, I think God kind of bumps it aside. <laughs> and and it's through our deepest weakness that God reveals himself. <laughs> yeah. Our, our deepest so weaknesses. Please tell the audience about your drama ministry. For the past 20 years, I've done a drama, drama ministry with my wife. She's been the producer and the booking agent. Uh -huh. We've gone all over the world. Uh, I've written six one-man plays, two mm -hmm. or three uh, full cast plays, mostly they're musicals. Some of them are just straight dramas. The latest one's called The Marriage Conspiracy. It's sort of like the screw tape letters for marriage. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I've, I'm now I'm doing film. I've got one feature film under my belt through Lucas Media Distribution called The Wheel of Knowing. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm working on a lot of other short film projects. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, hopefully I'll be able to see a couple more features come out in the near future. Oh, I hope so. Thank you so much for being with us here today, and, and I hope you will come again. Absolutely. And to you, our viewers, uh, go to Michael's website. and I just can't recommend this video enough, and I, probably anything that Michael does is going to be very high quality. And remember that as we close with this song, Reflect on what you're doing in your life, and when you get before Jesus Christ, is He going? Is it going to be burned up, or is it going to last? Is it going to turn to, into real treasure? Because only what is done for Christ will last, brother and sister. God bless you. We'll see you next time. Not a thing is held from your side. Not a thing we say or do. Jehovah, oh, I, you see all my ways. My light is laid bare before you. As I come before your throne now, I stand naked, unashamed. Your blood of love. Sacrifice you took the blame, and so in spirit and truth, in sheer gratitude, I bow down. You are so precious to me, delighting in me. She